Hello students, so today I am going to discuss second part of diuretics. In earlier part of diuretics, we have covered first two classes that are loop diuretics and the thiazide diuretics. So, today we will cover other classes, other important three classes. So, Myself, Gitika Mehta, Assistant Professor in Pharmacology at Rajkumar Goel Institute of Technology, Pharmacy, Ghaziabad. So, third class in the diuretics are carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. So, I hope you remember what are diuretics. Diuretics are the drugs which increases urine output, which increases urine volume. They causes how do they act? They act by reabsorption of sodium and water at different sites of nephron, at different sites of nephron. We have already studied the pharmacology of uh, first uh, class that is uh, loop diuretics, we checked on the sending loop of Henle and the second thiazide, we checked on the site 3 that is early DT, early distal convoluted tubule. So, loop diuretics they are known as highly efficacious diuretic, thiazides they are known as medium efficacious diuretic and now carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. This is the third class which are low efficacious diuretics, these are low efficacious diuretics. So, they produces mild diuresis, mild diuresis means they causes very less amount of the sodium loss, they causes very less amount of the sodium loss. So, only 5 percent of the sodium loss occur here because whatever rejected, whatever sodium load is rejected at this site will be get reabsorbed at the later site, especially at the sending loop of Henle. So, its site of action is proximal convoluted tubule, site of action is proximal convoluted tubule. So, as you know proximal convoluted tubule is responsible for the 65 percent reabsorption of the sodium ion, but inhibition of the reabsorption at this site will result only 5 percent sodium loss. because whatever load is rejected here will be reabsorbed at the later site, will be reabsorbed at the thick ascending loop of Henle. So, that is why they are known as mild diuretics, the low efficacious diuretics. So, drug in this is acetazolamide, drug in this is acetazolamide which is a sulfonamide derivative. So, these are mild diuretic. Site of action is site 1 proximal convoluted tubule. So, these are the reversible inhibitor of carbonic anhydrase enzyme. We will show this in the diagram reversible inhibitor of carbonic anhydrase enzyme. Carbonic anhydrase is an enzyme which catalyzes the formation of carbonic acid which catalyzes the formation of carbonic acid. So, water plus carbon dioxide in the presence of carbonic anhydrase forms carbonic acid. Its function in carbon dioxide and bicarbonate transport and in the excretion of hydrogen ion. Bicarbonate combines with sodium ion at the PCT and gets reabsorbed. So, here reabsorption of sodium occur, reabsorption of bicarbonate occur. We have already discussed during the renal physiology. So, sodium and bicarbonate reabsorption occur at the PCT. So, carbonic anhydrase enzyme kaha present hota hai? It is present in the renal tubular cells, especially proximal tubule, gastric mucosa exocrine pancreas, ciliary body of eyes, brain and RBCs. So, this is the location of carbonic 
anhydrase enzyme. Next is mechanism of action of carbonic anhydrase inhibitors like acetazolamide. So, this is the diagram of PCT cell of epithelial cell of proximal convoluted tubule epithelial cell of proximal convoluted tubule that is lumen of renal tubule this is lumen and this is cell of proximal convoluted tubule this is interstitial fluid where the blood capillaries are present where blood capillaries are present now on the lumen there is the sodium Put, uh, sodium hydrogen antiporter exchanger is present on the lumen. Through this exchanger, hydrogen ion is secreted from the cell into the lumen. Hydrogen ion is secreted from the cell into the lumen. This hydrogen ion combines with the bicarbonate. This hydrogen ion combines with the bicarbonate which is present in the lumen and form carbonic acid and form carbonic acid. This carbonic acid in the presence of carbonic anhydrase, this carbonic anhydrase is enzyme which is present on the brush border of epithelium, carbonic anhydrase enzyme present on the brush border of epithelium this carbonic acid will convert carbonic acid that it will cause the dehydration of the carbonic acid convert water and carbon dioxide. Now, this water and carbon dioxide will diffuse inside the cell, they will diffuse inside the cell and again in the presence of carbonic anhydrase enzyme which was which is present inside the cell in the presence of carbonic anhydrase enzyme it will again form carbonic acid and this carbonic acid will dissociate into hydrogen ion and bicarbonate ion will dissociate into hydrogen ion and bicarbonate ion so bicarbonate will be reabsorbed so bicarbonate from the cell goes to the interstitial fluid and thus it will go to the blood. So, reabsorption of bicarbonate occur also sodium ion in exchange with hydrogen ion enters from the lumen to the inside the cell and from the inside the cell through the this transporter will be reabsorbed into the blood. So, sodium reabsorption occur bicarbonate reabsorption occur in the cells of proximal convoluted tubule in the cells of proximal convoluted tubule. So, this is reabsorption occur. Now, our drug is carbonic anhydrase inhibitor diuretics kya karte hai? Unhone reabsorption ko inhibit karna hai. So, acetazolamide will inhibit the reabsorption of bicarbonate and sodium. Kaise? Acetazolamide will inhibit carbonic anhydrase. Acetazolamide kya hai? It is carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. It will bind to and inhibit enzyme carbonic anhydrase. Thik hai? One carbonic anhydrase is present in the lumen which is causing the dehydration of the carbonic acid. One carbonic anhydrase present inside the cell which is causing the formation of carbonic acid. So, acetazolamide binds with carbonic acid and inhibit this enzyme. So, thus slowing hydration of carbon dioxide. So, yaha pe cell ke andar carbonic acid nahi banega. Jab carbonic acid nahi banega, to hydrogen ion nahi banega, bicarbonate nahi hoga. Jab hydrogen ion nahi hoga, to sodium ke saath exchange nahi hoga. So, sodium ke saath exchange nahi hoga, to sodium ka excretion ho jayega. So, decrease availability of the hydrogen ion. There will be no formation of carbonic acid because of the inhibition of this enzyme. So, decrease availability of the 
hydrogen ions to exchange with the luminal sodium ions through the sodium hydrogen antiporter. So, there will be no exchange, there will be no exchange of the sodium and hydrogen ion. So, increased excretion of sodium, potassium, bicarbonate and water because there is the excretion of uh, there is no uh, increased excretion of sodium, potassium and bicarbonate. So, increased excretion of bicarbonate will result in the alkaline urine will result in the alkaline urine. Potassium ka excretion cure because increased sodium load will go to the site 4 late DTN collecting duct. So, that will result in the excretion of potassium. So, inhibition of carbonic anhydrase enzyme will result in increased excretion of sodium, potassium, bicarbonate and water and because of the secretion of bicarbonate urine formed here is alkaline, but this is mild diuretic. So, it less availability of bicarbonate in lumen fluid. So, it is self limited diuretic action, self limited kyu likha humne because jab carbonic acid banega hi nahi to bicarbonate ki kami ho jayegi kyunki uska excretion ho raha hai. So, filtration nahi hoga bicarbonate when there will be no bicarbonate then where will carbonic anhydrase will act. So, there is self limiting diuretic action. Sodium gets absorbed in exchange with potassium this we have already discussed. So, mark caliuresis occur excretion of the potassium because sodium load will go to the site 4 for the exchange with uh, potassium. So, bicarbonate loss so from the body so metabolic acidosis, but urine kaun sa hoga? alkaline. So, acetazolamide is well absorbed orally action of single dose lasts for 8 to 12 hours, dose is 250 mg once daily or BD uses acetazolamide because of the self limiting action production of acidosis and hypokalemia. Acetazolamide is not used as diuretic. So, because it has self limiting action and it causes acidosis metabolic acidosis causes hypokalemia it is not used as diuretic otherwise also it is mild diuretic action. So, current clinical use uh, are number one glaucoma it decreases the formation of aqueous humor decreases in intraocular tension because aqueous is rich in bicarbonate. So, because of the in increased excretion of bicarbonate aqueous humor formation nahi hoga decrease ho jayega aqueous humor formation decrease hoga to intraocular tension decrease ho jayega. So, that is why they are used in glaucoma. They are also used to alkaline urine in like in UTI they promote excretion of acidic drug. They are also used in epilepsy because they increases scissor threshold. So, they are used in epilepsy only when the other important primary drugs they are not effective. They use in acute motion mountain sickness benefit occur due to reduce CSF formation as well as lowering of CSF and brain pH. So, what are the adverse effects that we have already discussed metabolic acidosis due to bicarbonate loss, calcium loss in urine. So, renal stone formation may occur, hypokalemia, drowsiness, numbness, parathesia, numbness, fatigue, hypersensitivity reaction that is allergic reaction, they are contraindicated in liver diseases, they may precipitate hepatic coma by interfering with urinary elimination of ammonia due to alkaline urine because it causes the alkaline urine. So, it is interfere with the elimination of ammonia. So, it may precipitate hepatic coma. So, it is contraindicated in liver diseases. So, this was the acetazolamide which is carbonic anhydrase inhibitor which act on the site 1 
proximal convoluted tubule, but it is mild diuretic. Next mild diuretic, this is also mild diuretic, but very important potassium sparing diuretics, potassium sparing diuretics. So, potassium sparing diuretics are amyloride and triamethylene, which are the renal epithelial sodium channel inhibitor and second is paranolactone, which is aldosterone antagonist. Both are potassium sparing diuretic, both are potassium sparing diuretic and they are also mild diuretic because they call mild natriuresis, because they call mild natriuresis, they conserve potassium, they conserve potassium and increases the excretion of calcium. Now, this is diagram of epithelial cell of late distal tubule and collecting duct, late distal tubule and collecting duct. This is site of action of potassium sparing diuretic. So, this is the epithelium of late distal tubule and collecting duct. Here, there is the sodium channel are present on the renal epithelium and this sodium potassium ATPase pump present on the basolateral membrane. This site is present on the lumen and this site is present on the basolateral membrane. So, this basolateral membrane there is a sodium potassium ATPase pump. So, now spironolactone. So, first we will discuss the mechanism of action of spironolactone which is mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist. So, why these drugs are important? Because they conserve potassium, they do not loss potassium, but they are mild diuretic, sodium loss is very less and they also reserve potassium loss, they do not cause the potassium loss. So, spironolactone is aldosterone antagonist which is chemically related to spironolactone is chemically related to aldosterone and spironolactone is also a steroid which is chemically related to aldosterone. So, aldosterone is mineralocorticoid sabko pata hai mineralocorticoid recept, uh, hormone hai. So, aldosterone from the basolateral side enter inside the cell and binds with mineralocorticoid receptor and binds with mineralocorticoid receptors. So, this mineralocorticoid receptor will bind with the aldosterone and this complex will enter inside the nucleus, this will enter inside the nucleus and thus it will form formation of mRNA, it will form formation of mRNA and this mRNA will result in the synthesis of protein, which protein aldosterone induced protein, it will cause aldosterone induced protein. So, aldosterone induced protein, now what will it do? This aldosterone induced protein ke do kaam hai. Number one, it will cause the synthesis of the sodium channel. Number two, it will translocate the sodium channel okay, to the epithelium membrane and the basolateral membrane. So, this aldosterone induced protein will form the sodium channel and they will translocate this sodium channel at the renal epithelium, the luminal side of renal epithelium. This aldosterone induced protein also it will also translocate sodium potassium ATPase pump at the basolateral membrane. It will also translocate at the basolateral membrane. So, our drug is spironolactone, our drug is spironolactone which is competitive inhibitor of mineralocorticoid, competitive inhibitor of mineralocorticoid that is aldosterone. So, it will bind with mineralocorticoid receptor, spironolactone khud bind kar jayega, mineralocorticoid aldosterone ko bind nahi hone dega, 
So, spironyl lactone will bind with the uh, competitively bind with the menylocorticoid receptor and inhibit the action of aldosterone, inhibit the action of aldosterone and thus it will inhibit the formation of aldosterone induced protein, thus it will inhibit the uh, synthesis of this aldosterone induced protein. Ab ye jo channel te, what were they doing? Inka function kya hai? This sodium ion is causing the reabsorption of sodium ion from the lumen. This sodium channel is causing the reabsorption of sodium ion. So, sodium ion lumen se reabsorb ho raha hai. Cell ke andar aa raha hai. Kaun si cell mein? Late DTN collecting duct ki cell ke andar aa raha hai. And this sodium in exchange with potassium goes to the blood. So, here reabsorption of sodium occur. Sodium from the lumen. Lumen kaha pe hai? Kiska hai? Renal tubule ka. To jo bhi filtrate mein sodium tha that enters through this sodium, sodium channel and then inside the cell and from the cell it goes to the interstitial fluid and then to the blood. So, sodium ion get reabsorbed and in exchange with this potassium get secreted to the lumen and in exchange with this potassium get secreted. So, aldosterone kya kar raha tha? Sodium ka reabsorption and potassium ka secretion. Sodium ka reabsorption, potassium ka secretion, aldosterone kar raha tha. Ab hamari drug hai spironolactone. Spironolactone will produce opposite action because it antagonizes the action of aldosterone. So, spironolactone menylocorticoid receptor ke saath bind kar jayegi, aldosterone induced protein nahi banenge. So, sodium channels or sodium potassium ATPase function nahi karenge. So, there will be the, it will cause the absorption of, uh, sorry excretion of sodium ion and it will intake, it will cause the intake of potassium ion. So, thus it will conserve potassium ion. So, it will co conserve potassium ion. So, it causes the increase sodium excretion to the small amount and they decreases potassium loss. So, they conserve potassium ion because it is a spironolactone is aldosterone antagonist. So, it competes with the aldosterone for binding to the receptor and thus decrease formation of the aldosterone induced protein. So, decrease number of the formation of pump. So, aldosterone this we have already discussed that is it is spironolactone is the aldosterone antagonist synthetic steroid low efficacious, low efficacious kyun ka hai? Kyunki hai site 4 pack karte hai, kyunki hai site 4 pack karte hai late DTN collecting duct. Jab tak yaha pe filtered load pahunchta hai, tab tak most of the sodium pehle hi reabsorb ho chuka hota hai. So, most of the sodium is already reabsorbed in the proximal part, so that is low efficacious. Aldosterone regulates the sodium absorption and potassium secretion in the collecting tubule and duct and spironolactone will produce opposite action. So, this we have said it. So, reduced reabsorption of sodium and water secretion of and reduced secretion of potassium ion. So, this decreases potassium loss in urine. This decreases potassium loss in urine. So, what are the uses of spironolactone? because it is weak diuretic. It cannot be used alone as diuretic, but it is used in combination with other diuretics, high ceiling diuretics like uh, loop diuretics and the thiazides. So, they are used in combination with other diuretics, thiazides and loop diuretics. They are used in hypertension to prevent the loss of potassium. So, why they are used in combination? Number one, because they potentiate the diuretic action of other diuretics. Number second, they prevent the potassium loss. 
they also reduces hypertensive nephropathy they are also used in the edema liver hepatic and the cardiac edema they are also used in primary hyperaldosteronism pharmacokinetics the spironolactone active metabolite is canrenone so it is responsible for its pharmacological action canrenone is its active metabolite it is slow in onset of action and dose is 25 to 50 mg so these are the adverse effects endocrine side effect because it is a steroid it has endocrine side effect it binds to androgen and progesterone receptor in males it causes gynecomastia and impotence gynecomastia means enlargement of breast in males in female it causes hirsutism that is growth of the hair on the body and menstrual irregularities it causes hyperkalemia in renal impaired patient because it conserves potassium so it can increase the level of potassium in the blood hyperkalemia increase potassium in the blood so it can cause hyperkalemia in renal impaired patient drowsiness mental confusion gi upset metabolic acidosis they are contraindicated in peptic ulcer hyperkalemia will increase with ACE inhibitor. So, this is the contraindication that should not be used with the ACE inhibitor. Triametrine and amyloride, they are the same potassium sparing, low efficacious diuretic, they are non steroidal, they inhibit renal epithelium sodium channel, site of action is same as uh, we have discussed it in the uh, same diagram, late DT and collecting duct, they block sodium transport through the sodium channel in the luminal membrane. So, small increase in the sodium excretion. So, mild sal uretic action like potassium sparing, but the decreases potassium loss like spironolactone. Also conserve hydrogen used as adjuvants with other diuretics. Last in this is osmotic diuretics. This is mannitol non electrolyte pharmacologically inert they act by raising osmolarity of plasma and tubular fluid osmotic diuretic is mannitol non electrolyte pharmacologically inert that is it does not has its own action it reaches to the it gets filtered freely filtered at the glomerulus reaches to the renal tubule and it is not absorbed orally. So, it should be given intravenously by reaching to there in the renal tubule it raises the osmolarity of plasma and tubular fluid this is important it increases the osmolarity of plasma and tubular fluid. So, it limits tubular water and electrolyte reabsorption. So, how does it act? Whenever mannitol is given intravenously, it increases plasma osmolarity. So, fluid will shift from interstitial to the extracellular fluid. Interstitial fluid to the excess cell ke bahar aajega fluid and thus it will increase the extracellular fluid volume and increase the urine formation. So, it results in water diuresis. So, water ka excretion bar jata hai in this case filtered freely by the glomerulus, but not reabsorbed increases the osmolarity of the tubular fluid water retained in proximal tubule and descending limb of loop of Henle. So, its site of action is proximal tubule loop of Henle. So, this is the major site of it action. So, water retained in the proximal tubule and descending limb of Henle's loop. So, increases the water diuresis basically they act by increasing the osmolarity of the plasma and tubular fluid. So, these are the uses and adverse effects they are given intravenously sorry they are increased intracranial pressure increase they are used in the increased intracranial pressure and they are used in 
increase intraocular pressure there will they decrease osmotic diuretic will decrease intracranial pressure and intraocular pressure they are used to counteract low osmolarity of plasma and ESF due to rapid hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis. Dehydration, headache, nausea vomiting, allergic reactions they are contraindicated in renal insufficiency and pulmonary edema. These are the newer agents arginine vasopressin receptor antagonist and adenosine A1 receptor antagonist. So, these are the references. So, we have covered all the classes of diuretics most important is loop diuretic then thiazides and potassium sparing diuretics are uh, spironolactone. Thank you.